can one find the unchanging, unmovable awareness? You say it is obvious, but not an object. If it has no shape, colour or form, how can it be recognised, and by whom, Andre? Uh, how can one find the unchanging, unmovable awareness? If the sense of the one who must find it is seen through, because we believe so much in ourselves as persons, and it is the person who is seeking the impersonal. It is the person who is seeking the presence. But the earlier than the person is the presence. Person is a shape that appears inside the presence. So, how will this person, who is only a projection, find the presence? You say it is obvious, but not an object. If it has no colour, or shape, or form, how can it be recognised, and by whom? <laughs> so, the answer is inside your questioning, actually. Hmm? Everything has some shape, size, colour, weight, texture, quality. And by the said quality, so they are discerned. You discern them. Oh, this is this. This is not this. This one is so much weight, this one is so light, this one is transparent, this one is opaque, like this must be some quality, something to distinguish, some variety, some change, something that can be compared, all this must be there. Now, if it has none of this, whatever I am speaking to, then how can it be recognised? You know what you can recognise, Can you know what you cannot recognise? That which knows and recognises otherness, can that itself be recognised? And this is another way of meeting this question. That which knows everything else, perceives everything, every shape, everything that is discernible, has quality, even the most subtle. And some, some sensations, some phenomena, they are so they are so subtle they 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 don't have any names for them still they are objects of perception in the eyes of the perceiver you see everything that is knowable experienceable perceivable depends upon and report to the perceiver now can the perceiver also be perceived this was my question you see who is the perceiver Is it not you? But when I say you, and sometimes I may say the you without you, the you less you, because there is a you that has a lot of quality. So like any other phenomenon with quality, that too is also perceived. So the perceiving of the you who has quality must take place in some space of perceiving which is beyond quality. How will it be known, and by whom? This is your final question. You see. Is this just an unending riddle? I say, no. But to merely give an answer to you is not enough. So rare, so unique is the the factors that must come together in order that that subtle recognition happens it's not just an answer many people have the answer you see conceptually 
they have an answer. They can write even book about it. But are they themselves dissolved in that seeing? Rare is such a one. In your words, if it has no shape, or colour, or form, how can it be recognised? When one knows all shapes and colours, textures, change, comparisons, distance, everything is perceivable or known. Don't you intuitively stand in the place which cannot be known, closer than intimacy, no distance? You have to tell me about this one. Uh, yes, but um, it's like there is no juice to it. There is no a, juice to it. Yeah, it's yeah, uh, yes, true, it's true. For whom would be the juice? Who will be the taster of the juice? The juice is going to consume the taster. The juice is going to consume the taster. Earlier, I used to be fond of saying that this is my piranha question, because as the question, as the questioner enters fully into the quest through this question, who really am I? What perceives this? You see, then this question is going to eat up the questioner. Something says, but it has no juice. Something which is accustomed to tasting things, and it wants the biggest taste of all in the universe, the taste of awakening. But can it, can it, sust, can it sustain, can it take awakening? It, it must itself get absorbed in it. If something is saying, yeah, but there is no juice, there is no juice to it. It is the source from where all juices come. And the tasting of those juices occur to it, but it is not directly a taster of juices. It's because I've, I've worked on the question again mm. this year we've seen mm. uh, a, f a few times, and uh, there was two times I mentioned this in Sweden two mm. years ago to you, where the, the recognition was very clear, mm. um, with or without juice. You know, it, there's, it's like a, a thunder of of a sudden understanding, or mm. like a, mm. oh, that's how how it is, how it works. And uh, today I, I was working on that question also, can the seer be seen? And uh, mm. it's kind of, um, I don't know how to do it, um, because... Mm. Okay, first thing, is there a seer? Is there a seer? Because usually you put ER, we have to see is one thing. When you put ER to something, you create a kind of entity. Like to do something and to be the doer of something, you become... An entity who does something, isn't it? There is seeing of, there is perceiving of. The question is, naturally we feel that if, if, if something is seen, by whom is it seen? And then we say, but yes, it must be by me. Can there be another seer other than me? Then the seer naturally feels like it's something, it's an entity that is doing the seeing, or perceiving, or you understand? So the question, you know, can the seer be seen? Then it's not just merely a thinker's question. You must contemplate it, because any answer that comes, almost always it is just conceptual, just mental. And then something will say, there's no juice. But how to contemplate it without being mental, you know? Ah. How to look directly, where to look? You mental know, you know, mental you can see. We have the sense, but that's just mental. It just feels like, but there's perceiving of mental. That's mental. That is intellectual. Oh, now that is more an emotional state. Oh yes, no, you know, you're being very psychological. Now you can see all of this. As what are you seeing? Don't think that this 
talk that is taking place now is merely intellectual. It's searching, it's scanning to find what is there of you. Everyone has the feeling I, and every I feels unique. Where did I come from? Also, there is awareness of I. And whatever other qualities is associated with I, they are also perceived. You see, what happens is, about this type of looking, around this type of looking, some the mind starts to get tired. But it's not a real tired. It's a fake tired. Because it starts to cover itself up. You have to search him out, because the mind is on your back, is the monkey on your back, or your shoulder, or in your belly, even appearing to be in your heart. Let's keep talking. Um, sometimes I come to the to the to the idea that. Uh, mm -hmm. Um, well, some teachers say it, and uh, it, it's starting to make more and more sense that uh, there's nothing that can be done about the real or discovering the real. It's, it's more about uh, putting away the unreal or the false ideas, and uh, mm. maybe naturally the. Who is going to do it? Who is putting it away? Let's yes. slow. D let's slow down, so that perhaps what we say will be in line with where we actually are. Some teachers say, they say, yes, you know, you must do a, this, put away the unreal, and who is the one who is going to put away the real or the unreal or whatever? Who is it? Well, ultimately, it's just uh, consciousness. Everything, it has no source other than consciousness. But uh, of course, there is always, or not always, but there's still this idea of some individuality or some person being around doing things. and. Uh, that's being a little bit a little bit seen through lately, but uh, it's not it's not complete. But uh, sometimes it, it, it although it's very it's very subtle also because I can I can find I cannot find either of these things either the the seer or the person mm -hmm. I cannot find any of those. But and still, the person seems to be more. You are what who is who is not <laughs> finding it? Slow down, slow down. You are what. Uh, Establish your identity. You say, I can't find this here. I can't find all this. So I just want to know, just to qualify yourself, you are what? Who can or cannot find? Well, I feel like I have one foot in in, in, in awareness and one foot in, in, in a person, you know, like there is there is some seeing of of some things, but uh, no, it's, no. it's not one foot in awareness, one foot in in some what's the other in, thing? In the person or in the, in the person. One foot in the person, one foot in awareness. So then, from that perspective, you can neither be the awareness which has got only one foot, <laughs> nor the person that's got the other foot. So who are you then? It's not just semantics. There is something in this. Something is hidden in this. It could be a subtle thing, just like I say, you know, my finger can hide the sun. A concept believe in can completely distract you from your natural recognition of self. Not self as other. This is the this is the thing, and education tell you, no, but doesn't make sense. If you must recognize something, it must be something separate. Yes, yes. Normally, yeah. In non-dual recognition, what could it possibly mean? A non-dual recognition. It's then the mind starts to say, oh, you know, that's being very clever now. No, no, no. Just as though, if you can imagine for a moment, say for instance you had an operation or something, or you're coming, you're coming into consciousness, but there's nothing to see. There's nothing to see. There's no no object. There's no comparison. There's no light. Nothing. There's nothing to compare. You will still have the sense, I am. You still have the sense of being, of existence. 
You don't need another thing to tell you you exist. Beyond even this feeling of existence, of beingness, because the beingness also, in its most subtle way, is also known or perceived. The feeling of existence, the feeling that I am here now, and conscious, and perceiving. So there is even the awareness of perceiving, even. So what is left of you? Who are you? You cannot go to the past or to the mind. It is not in any dictionary, in any thesaurus, anything like this. All these are objects. All these are things you can see, perceive. Perhaps the question may seem inadequate or inappropriate. Who are you? Because almost any answer you are going to give will not be true. It will only be another idea or concept. But the there is still a point to the question. It stirs up and dips into something, and even that is seen, but it triggers maybe a kind of mirroring for something that has no quality. What kind of nonsense is this? Something deeper than feeling knows this. In this world, no value is given to this, because you cannot spend it, you cannot boast about it, because there is nothing personal about it. It is the common ground of all beings. Maybe we just want, I want to be me. I don't want to be that. Or at least, if I am going to be that, I want to be the best that I can be. Or something. We have a lot of tricks. Maybe you just only know how to use your head, and the head is frustrated. You know, like, how can I know that? What? How can that be known? Or you have to give me something. You have to come with something. Come like this is the most important thing for you. It is the most important thing. You know, I, I've. Because I don't know what to do anymore. Or mm. I don't know if continuing doing what I'm what I'm doing. It's you are who? I don't know. I have no idea. You know, it's uh, whatever I say is not a hundred percent sure. I'm not a hundred percent sure. There's something that has to catch. The questions are sliding through. Something has to catch a little bit to really take a moment's breath to really comprehend, because something is here. The pulse of it is saying, "I, I am, I, I, me." But this me is not consistent. Sometimes it is the person, sometimes it is presence, sometimes it is I don't know. But still, an eloquence is there, speaking about everything. Yes, I did this, I studied, I, 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 but you, who, are you, who are you? Please, right now, who is speaking this? There is more to discovering who is speaking than what you are speaking about. That was my first question, you know. On this oh. paper. Yeah, no, it doesn't matter. But that—that's the the whole point of it is uh, to mm. discover who is speaking. You know, mm. I, I don't I don't care so much about what it's speaking, what it's being spoken about. If the speaking is the speaking itself is seen, isn't it? As I am speaking, there's an an awareness, an intelligence, that somehow seems a little behind the speaking, which itself cannot be watched speaking. But speaking and intelligent speaking is taking place in front of it. So the speaking itself is perceived, isn't it? Who is the speaker? So it, it is an introspective question. It helps something to slow down and just to catch up and be one with. 
either what is being spoken or to recognize, but I'm not that at all. It is connected with me, this talking, this listening, even the sense of seeking is occurring for the sense of I. But there is still maybe another presence here that is not participating in this. It just is. I saw a picture once in India. It is of two birds in a tree. One of them is building a nest, and the other one is just watching. It's a beautiful picture. Something is building a nest. The other bird is just watching. The mind is building a nest, with your permission, because you have identity with it. And when you give identity with the mind, then you start to create longing and future, and how oh, what we're going to do later. And it lives in the dream. Like that. But there is another one watching. It's not building a nest. That second one, which is not secondary, that watches, is what? Just like now, something is being spoken and comprehended on some level. Either it is heard, understood, or heard, not understood. But there is perceiving of that. Perceiving of that is occurring to the beingness itself, the feeling of existence. I am like that. You can do this and participate in this type of discovery, in the waking state. In sleep, you may have a portion of this type of exchange, but it is not actually reliable. It is not consistent. In deep sleep, nothing of this is happening. There is no satsang in sleep. There is no seeker, no finder. There is no absolute awareness, relative consciousness, mind, ego. None of this is there. And there is a love for sleep, sometimes an anticipation, a joy for sleep. Who enjoys sleep? When you say, I, something say, I, I did this, I believe, no, I don't agree, I want. Watch this I, not what it wants. The idea you have of who you are is suffering from other ideas it has about itself. Watch this I sense. Who will watch it? No, never mind. Watching is possible. You may call it the intellect of the being is watching or something, whatever. But watching is possible. Follow that guidance. Something arises inside and says, Yes, all I want is this, all I want is this. Then the question comes, You are who? You are who? But there is an insistence, a persistence, there is a faithfulness, a loyalty to this I that wants. There is such a strong belief, it is me, it is me. And it is you, actually, up to a point. But you are still there beyond that point. It's a mixture of some mental noise, some idea, some belief, some culture, some conditioning, and identification is speaking like that. A voice you know very well. You associate so intimately with it, you rarely question it. Other things you question, but your identity, you rarely question it. I am pointing, who speaks this thing? Because it carries a smell. And then you say, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, then you give some kind of a mental answer. You are to stop right there and to look and to discern. But the speaking of this also is phenomenal. Who speaks it 
It's not known. Either. What is seeing all of this? Yes, yes, it is seen. What is seeing? But this type of questioning, as you question, something is disappearing. If it's not disappearing, then your seeing is only mental. When this question is put, because so many beings uh, awaken to the truth, through the same door, they come, they look. But who sees this? And some of them things stop and plunges within to look what sees. And now ten questions became one. What sees this thing? And they are not looking for an answer to give you. They are looking for an answer for themselves. And there is a difference. What sees this? And as the attention turns in so acutely, with such intensity, it is burning the forest of delusion. Something is becoming light and trembling with joy and space. If this is not happening, then perhaps you are still only on the mental plane. Perhaps you are not patient enough in your looking. Perhaps you are using only the mind, and it's, it, it has no patience. It is full of premature conclusions. But in such a question, rare is this question. Rarer still is the one who, who, who can assimilate it, who is struck by this question. Because this question followed through reveals your own true nature. But some other energies are going to move in front as they do to give you a report, to give you an opinion or something like that. So rare it is that one plunges for one's own self and keep this question alive. Be quiet. Understand the question. You can breathe it, that's okay. See if that which sees is itself perceivable. Don't worry about the answer. Hold the question tightly, and let the seeing be revealed. This is what happens. Here there won't be many questions. So powerful is this one question, it is going to swallow up all other questions. Then it must plunge right here, inside. Otherwise, you move on to another question and another question. I see you in six months, you still have more questions. Questions indicate a quest, which becomes hotter and hotter until it burns itself up like a meteorite falling towards the earth and never lands. You have come so far, but something is there, pushing its head in front of you, and you are thinking it is you. You don't need more books and clever projections or whatever, just this you will find out. 